All right, I think my first pitch is gonna be a curveball. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious、uh, to know how many of you are gonna take a swing at it. And, and, and here, here's the question. Here's a question for you. Who are you, and why are you here? Who are you, and why are you here? Stop for a second. You know, listen, reflect. Think about this. Who are you, and why are you here? Hey guys, welcome to Chronicles of a Psychology Professor. Here, I try to share、um, a little bit of psychology, a little bit of life, and I try to provide a lot of food for thought. And and the truth is, I enjoy doing this, and some of you actually enjoy listening. How crazy is that? So that's why I click on the record button. You know,、um, I recently heard this question as a part of a story about a rabbi named Akiva. You know, Akiva was considered a master teacher. You know, he was a scholar, and people would seek his guidance and and his advice. You know, when confronted with life's most difficult and challenging, you know, questions and 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 circumstances. And one day, thousands of years ago. Akiva was walking home, and and somehow, you know, he got lost. You know, one version of the story says that that Akiva was so distracted by his own thoughts that he missed the path that led to his village.、Uh, another version of the story said that the night was very foggy and, and 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 very dark, and that he didn't see the exit, and he simply kept on walking. The point is that he walked in the wrong direction. For a long time, and and he didn't realize it until he walked up to the gates of a big fortress. Once he was there, you know, standing in front of those gates, a soldier yelled down at him and asked him, "Who are you? And why are you here?" Again, you know, different versions of the story say different things. However, at one point. Akiva asked the soldier how much he was getting paid for protecting the fortress, and the soldier eventually responded to Akiva. You know, the soldier eventually told Akiva how much he was getting paid. At that time, Akiva told the soldier, "I will pay you double if you come home with me and ask me that same question every day. Who are you, and why?" Are you here? You know, this is a very, a very profound question about identity and purpose. You know, it's a life-changing question once you embark on the journey of trying to answer it. You know, it's frustrating. Yep. It's also very satisfying, and it's probably a never-ending journey. At least that's kind of what it seems like to me. Who are you, and why are you here? Think about it. You know, I was recently asked about how I manage stress and prevent burnout. I was、uh, giving a presentation to staff at a local hospital, and I was talking about the origins of health, something known as salutogenesis. And the main topic or the main theme of my talk was the miracle of people doing well. Despite horrible circumstances, and that's really cool. The miracle of people doing well despite horrible circumstances, and and yes, that's another podcast. But during the presentation, I was asked how I manage stress and prevent burnout, and I said something to the effect of, you know, as long as your decisions and actions are aligned with what you consider your purpose in life, you know, stress takes on a different role. You know, it's actually. Energizing and, and and motivating, it becomes a satisfying challenge. And while burnout is not really a thing, you know the problem. I think, and and I might、uh, be getting a little cheesy here. The problem is when our decisions and actions are disconnected from our purpose, or or when we ignore or reject our purpose as as we follow you know mainstream ideas, as we try to fit in that box, you know. 
uh, you know, that box that exists in a, in a imaginary realm, you know, that was created by somebody somewhere, sometime, somehow. You know, when we try to fit in a box that does not belong to us, this is when stress becomes a problem. This is when burnout, you know, becomes a thing. Finding and fulfilling our purpose is very important. You know, especially in regards to our quality of life, to our well-being, you know, finding and fulfilling our purpose is very important, but it's not an easy task. It's not easy at all. You know, just the other day, just last week, I was talking to a group of college freshmen, you know, and when I spoke of purpose, I think I actually shared the story of Akiva, you know, a couple of students kind of kind of nodded their head and, and, and you know, and, and made it clear with their body language that they had no idea what their purpose was. You know, they seemed kind of concerned, saying, oh, crap, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know why I'm here. And, 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 and this is very normal, you know, especially for, for teenagers and young adults, you know, who are trying to make sense of their life. I mean, I'm getting old. And I'm constantly trying to align with my purpose or I constantly disalign <laughs> with my purpose. It's kind of like an ongoing thing. Um, a part of the problem is that in today's, today's society, purpose is not really given importance. You know, even though there's a, there's a growing body of research that emphasizes the importance of meaning and purpose, you know, especially in relation to well-being and to quality of life. But purpose is, is not really given the importance it should be given, you know. So I went home after that presentation with the college freshmen thinking, wow, a lot of these students, you know, young adults really don't have a clue where they're going or what they're doing. So when I, I don't know, you know, when I'm confused, when I don't, I don't know what's going on, I turn to Google and I start Googling stuff and I Googled the following question. How, how do you find purpose? And I found a really cool piece of information. I really liked it and I'm going to try to explain it. It's a diagram. It's a diagram of four circles and these four circles are connected in various degrees with each other at the center, you know, and the first circle is about what you love. That's what it says, what you love. The second is about what the world needs. The third circle is about what you're good at. And the fourth circle is about what you can get paid for. You know, these circles unite in the middle and they highlight four categories, passion, mission, vocation, and profession. Passion is what you love. Mission is what the world needs. Vocation is what you're good at. And profession is what you can get paid for. You know, and the diagram uh, is a little more complex and beautiful than what I'm explaining. But what I get from it is that you find your purpose when all these things align or when all these things touch each other. What you love what the world needs, what you're good at, and what you can get paid for all come together, you know? When you can live fulfilling your passion and mission and vocation and profession, you know, imagine finding a way of doing all these things together. Just imagine it for a second. Imagine making money, doing what you love and doing what you're good at while giving the world something it needs or solving a problem faced by others. You know, for me, the, the, the mission part is very important because it's not just about what you love. It's not just about what you're good at. And it's not just about the money. You know, if you just focus on these three things, it's kind of selfish. You know, I think it's also about making the world a better place somehow, you know, about giving, about helping, about doing something for others. And I think the mission is a very important and crucial part of purpose of achieving satisfaction, of achieving well-being. Let me give you an example. You know, content creation. We're all into content creation, you know. Now that we live in this digital age, it's all about creating and sharing good content. So, content. so think about it. You love doing it. It's your passion. Time flies when you're creating. 
and you're good at it. You have what it takes to create quality content, okay? And you create content that helps improve humanity in some way. You know, I don't know, you, you educate people on important issues, you motivate, you inspire, in some way you heal others, you know? You provide people with a way of improving their quality of life and <laughs> you make money. You make enough money to make a living. Think about it. This is, this is really, really my goal in life, you know? Uh, um, do something that I love, do something that I'm good at, do something that helps others and make money doing it. And just uh, to dig a little deeper, let me ask you this. And ideally, you write down these questions. Whenever you have the time, come back to it. Write down the questions so that you can start working on finding the answers. Especially if you have no clue what's going on in your life right now. Write these questions down. And start answering them. Here you go. Here are the four questions. What do you love doing? What are you good at? What problem can you help solve in the world? And how can you get paid for doing this? Find your passion, right? Your mission, your vocation, and your profession. Imagine that. Imagine that. What do you love doing? What are you good at? What problem can you help solve in the world? And how can you get paid for doing all this together? That right there, guys, is purpose. That right there is my goal. And that's probably your goal if you really think about it. As you know, you know, I haven't recorded for a while. It's been quite a few months. <laughs> and, and that's okay. I mean, I think the podcast police might think a little bit differently, but it's okay. You know why? Because there's a time for, uh, there's a time to inspire, there's a time to transpire, and there's a time to expire. You know, think about this from a creative perspective. Sometimes, you know, I'm very inspired. I have a lot to say. <laughs> Creating and producing comes very easily. I feel good about myself. I feel good about what I have to say and what I have to give. I feel confident. You know, things just kind of flow. It feels very natural, you know, creating, producing, recording, doing this stuff just feels very natural. And I call this a time of inspiration, a time of inspiration. However, you know, there are times when things aren't that easy. I struggle. I feel insecure. I feel inadequate. You know, I can't find words. My, my ideas just escape me. You know, creating, producing, reco recording becomes a, a burden. You know, I have, to, I have to really push for things to happen. If, and it feels forced, you know. And I call this a time for transpiration. Transpiration. Then, there's a time when I'm just not getting anywhere. I'm just not accomplishing anything. And this is the time to stop. This is the time to dis disconnect, to let go, to walk away. A time to not create, not produce, not record. A time to put the pen and paper away. I don't know, to shut down the computer, to put the equipment away and turn off the light. And I call this a time for expiration. And I think this reflects a healthy creative process. Inspire, transpire, expire repeat. Inspire, transpire, expire, repeat. You know, even, even when working on an essay, for example, there's a time when the ideas and the words, you know, they flow easily. It feels almost automatic, you know. Then there's a time when it's not that easy. You have to push and make an effort and really, really work hard. However, there's a time when you need to stop and walk away because you're no longer getting anywhere. You, you're no longer man making progress, you know. And sometimes, you know, walking away and disconnecting gives you what you need to start the creative process again. You know, I don't know how many times I've wasted so much time staring at at a blank computer screen, trying to force myself to write, you know? But I'm also 
a witness to how, you know, kind of stepping away for a while gets the creative juices going again. You know, there's a time to inspire, to embrace inspiration. There's a time to transpire, to sweat through it. And there's a time to expire, to stop and walk away. Think about it from a weightlifting perspective. I'm not really good at weightlifting, although I really do enjoy it. When you start your set, you know, the weight is very doable. It feels good. Towards the end of your set, it gets difficult and you really, really need to push yourself to get it done. Then you stop, you rest, and you recover. I'm not an expert in, in, in growing muscle, but my understanding is that muscle grows during rest. Think about that and translate that to your life. The muscle grows during rest. I think creation happens during rest as well. And, and in any, any endeavor in life, you know, this phrase reflects a healthy balance of activities. Inspire, transpire, expire, repeat. I, I don't think an overachieving mentality is healthy. You know, uh, you can't just keep on going and going and going, pushing and pushing and pushing, doing and doing and doing, you know, Listen to this, guys. There's a difference between being persistent and being stubborn. Yes. There's a difference between being persistent and being stubborn. And this is an idea that, that I just started to explore. But I did a little bit of research. And I took down some notes. And, and here's what I think so far, you know, about the difference uh, between persistence and, and stubbornness. Here we go. Persistence keeps you moving. Stubbornness keeps you stuck. There you go. My first thought. Persistence keeps you moving. Stubbornness keeps you stuck. Um, persistence allows for change. You know, you start walking in one direction, then realize it's not getting you to where you want to go. So you change directions. You change plans. You change strategies. If one thing doesn't work, you try another. Failure is not really a thing. There are only things that work and things that don't work. So failure is not really a thing. Some things work, some things don't work. And failures become lessons. Stubbornness, on the other hand, is rigid. You follow the same path even though it's not taking you where you want to go. You do the same things over and over again even though they're, they're not producing the outcomes that you want. You stick to the same plan and strategy even, even if it doesn't work. You ignore and you reject new information. Persistence energizes you, gives you joy, gives you peace, satisfaction, despite the ups and downs, despite the struggle. Persistence allows for moments of inspiration, moments of transpiration, and moments of expiration, right? Stubbornness turns you into a hamster, you know, running in circles. You keep on pushing and, and going even though you aren't getting anywhere. You know, even though you're not achieving anything. Stubbornness is pretty insane if you think about it because you keep on doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. You know, I think, I think that burnout is fed by stubbornness. You just keep on pushing until you can't push any longer. You just keep on hanging on until you can't hang on any longer, you know? And I see this in a lot of students. Some of you think you just need to put your head down and push. Then you get burnt out. You get fatigued. You get angry. You get frustrated. You start making bad decisions. Remember, persistence is about finding the balance between inspiration, transpiration, and expiration. You know, I don't know. I might call this episode that way. Inspire, transpire, expire, repeat. Hmm, maybe, you know. So here are some, uh, some final thoughts here. Um, when it comes to living a life from a place of identity and purpose, it's very important to listen to your conscience. So when it comes to living a life from a place of identity and purpose... When it comes to trying to answer that question, who are you and why are you here? It's important to listen to your conscience. And let me share a quote 
from Viktor Frankl. And if you follow this podcast, you know I talk about him quite a bit. Let me read it. Let me see. Let me see if I can do this. Um, Don't aim at success. That's what he starts saying. Don't aim at success. Because the more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. Oh, wow. Let Let me say that again. Don't aim at success. The more you aim at it, the more you make it a target, the more you're going to miss it. Because success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue. So he's saying that success and happiness cannot be pursued. These two things are not pursued. They happen. That's what ensue means. Success and happiness happen. And it happens and they happen as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as a byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. So what he's trying to say here is don't aim at success. Don't aim at happiness because the more you try to succeed, the more you try to be happy, the more you fail at it. Because success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It happens. These things happen as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as a byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. He says, happiness must happen. And the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. I'm going to repeat that. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will live to see then you will live to see that in the long run. In the long run I say, success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think about it. So you need to start listening to your conscience, right? And to carry out what your conscience is telling you. And then if you do this, you will see that in the long run, success and happiness will follow you because you actually have forgotten to think about it. Guys, there's a time to listen to others, to read, to learn, you know, to become a professional in in any field, any field. You need to learn the ins and the outs of that profession. You need to be guided by other professionals in that field. The scientific method needs to become your way of looking for answers. You know, as a psychotherapist, I learned and I continue learning about the history of psychology, the people involved. You know, I I learned and continue learning about the several psychological perspectives. You know, to become a therapist, I had to learn and I continue to learn about evidence-based interventions and I had to receive and continue receiving, you know, clinical supervision. So in my profession, I have to listen to others. I have to read. I have to learn. I have to practice. I can't just do whatever the heck I want just because I want to do it that way, you know. But there comes a time when I need to listen to my own conscience, I need to find my own place within this profession. I need to discover what I bring to the table. I need to find my own identity and purpose as a therapist. I need to to quiet down the external voices and I need to start listening and following the voice of my conscience. Right? So I'm not saying don't listen to other people. No, especially in the professional field, to become a professional, you need to become an expert in that field. But there comes a time when you start listening to your own voice and start becoming your own person within that profession, if that makes any sense. So let's summarize all this. You know, what have I what what, what have I talked about? <laughs> Live from a place of identity and purpose. Find what you love, what you're good at. Find what the world needs. And then find a way of getting paid for doing these three things, for doing what you love, for doing what you're good at, and for doing what the world needs. You know, Embrace this process of inspiration, transpiration, and expiration. And once you figure it out, repeat as necessary. 
Become educated, listen to others, read, learn, practice, but also find your own voice, your own identity and purpose within whatever profession you're seeking. Remember, a profession gives you the opportunity to fulfill your purpose, but the profession is not your purpose. You know, the profession is just a means of doing what you're meant to do in life. Guys, I think this is enough for today. I'm glad I'm back. Now that I'm in my office, I'll start recording a little bit more. Maybe. Remember, inspiration, transpiration, expiration. Hopefully, (laughs) uh, I catch on to a moment of inspiration. Hey, guys, take care. Be good. 